I mean, I hate to be a broken record, uh, so I'm just going to say it quickly and then move on. Uh, but a number of people in the forums uh, really wanted to make hay out of creativity or um, human beings as creatives or uh, really God's creative nature uh, and that God in God's self and God's triune nature is differentiating um, and therefore creative. Uh, and, and we see the same thing in human beings. And then, you know, the, the natural logical leap is the image of God uh, is human creativity. Um, again, um, play is something we, we see in the animal kingdom. Um, creative play, uh, creative planning is something that we see in the animal kingdom. Obviously not to the extent, really, that uh, human beings do it, but, but we do actually see creative um, uh, cultural inventions. Yeah, uh, so the animals are actually working together and developing roles, uh, which is a creative act. It's, it's, it's not something that's unique to human beings. Moreover, uh, it's not something that's universal to human beings. Not all human beings express creati creativity. Um, it's, un it, it's just the way it is that there are some human beings who are limited uh, in cognitive ways that uh, prevent them from being creative, um, prevent them from inventing, prevent them from expressing novelty. And, and so you wonder, if the image of God is creativity, then why is it that not all human beings share in it? Um, so, okay, so I, I've made this critique a number of times, and I'm, and I'm just going to end it there. Uh, if, if, if the image of God is something that's not shared by all human beings, then I think that we should strongly, we should, we should be strongly, we should strongly push against uh, it as um, what the image of God is, what Imago Dei is. Whatever Imago Dei is, it must be something that all human beings can participate in, all human beings can claim, uh, whatever their, um, you know, their status. And so, that said, uh, two things on that point. If you, if, if that, if, if you insist, however, um, you look at the Genesis narrative, you cannot deny God's creativity, you recognize the same thing in human culture, and you say it must be the image of God. Very well. But then you're going to have to make a, uh, a claim about the image of God that it's, um, and the way that it's fractured, and the way that it gets restored, and what eschatological, what end times, what, um, what, what the image looks like at that, at that time. You're, you're, you're making a, a very much larger claim than something like, this is the image of God. You're also making a claim about what salvation entails, because you have to put the image back together. And you're making a claim about what heaven is like and eschatology um, because you're saying human beings are aimed in this direction. Um, and so whatever the image is, it must be fully fleshed out, fully displayed, fully embedded in the kingdom of God. And so your, your claim is not just about human anthropology. Your claim is about soteriology and your claim is also, also about eschatology. And it might even be a claim about the church as well because then you're going to have to make a, uh, some decisions about how it is that the church... Um, uh, shepherds or midwives uh, the image into being um, in th in a limited yet real way. I'm just not sure that we want to say that about creativity, all those things. Maybe we do, but if we do, know what you're doing and then and craft craft a, a robust doctrine of the image of God and the way that you know creativity or whatever it is plays out um, in soteriology, church, eschatology. And once you've done those things, once you've got your your, your soteriology, your ecclesiology, and your eschatology, and honestly, you're going to have to do Christology as well, because you're going to have to uh, explain how it is that Jesus fully images um, the divine, you know, creative nature or something like that. You, you just got a lot of theological work to do, which is fine. It's not bad to have a lot of theological work to do. Just know that you're signing up for it. Um, the second thing is, Let's just say that we're going to, you know, push off all of these things, nature and attributes. We're not going to say that any human nature, any human attribute, any human capacity, any human ability, that these things are the image of God. Does that mean they're not important? No, it doesn't. Uh, rather, they're very important, all of them. And I would encourage you as a little preview of the human nature lecture this week. This week's lecture talks about how we incorporate um, intellect, emotion, psychology, spirituality, um, physicality, how we bring all these things together in a unified notion of the human person, the human being. And so instead of, instead of making one of them super important as the image of God, the Imago Dei, instead let's incorporate all of them as, as fundamental components of human nature. 
And then we can say, because we know human nature is damaged, we know it's imperfect, flawed, limited. No one's, no one's, no one's saying uh, that the that the human that human nature needs to be somehow, um, you know, perfect or unlimited. It, it by its very nature is limited and imperfect. And so then when we talk about the fact that not everyone's creative or not everyone has the same level of intellect or not everyone's the same emotional, emotional capacity um, or the same spiritual, it, it, we don't have to say that because we already know, we don't have to worry about that because we already know that human nature is imperfect and it's limited. And it's, whereas Imago Dei, Imago Dei is something that, that, that has to be universal because scripture compels it and it has to be uh, um, fleshed out in people, it has to be involved in our in our salvation, um, in in ways maybe that human nature doesn't. So I'm okay. Uh, you know, if if your theology of, of the Imago Dei is creativity or intellect or emotion or psychology or spirituality, whatever it is, I'm cool with that. Just know that you're you're committing to a much larger theological project than rather than just theological anthropology, and also. You know, it's okay to not make this the image of God. It's okay for this just to be a, a, a part of a limited and imperfect human nature, uh, of many parts, so that all of these things that we talk about is valuable. Our ability to love, hate, have compassion, be creative, all of these things um, are, are part of the human nature that God created um, without making any one of them this fundamental, like most important you know, this is how we resemble God. This is what makes human beings special. Um, if, if, if we can do that, then I think we actually give more value uh, to these things. And I think that we actually prevent them from being devalued when, um, when, when, when the, what's, what's hot or what's popular in theology changes.